Hi there. We're back with another example of a two-stage stochastic optimization problem. If you have not watched the conceptual video I made about this particular topic and example number one, I recommend you do so first. So I'm going to leave links to those two videos down in the description of this video here. Let's get to the example. Uh, it's called Central Airline, so it's about an airline that is um, thinking of ordering a new airplane so that they can fly a particular leg, and they're debating how big a plane they need to purchase. More specifically, how should they partition this plane so that they can really extract the most they can out of the potential demand patterns that they have been observing historically. So let's take a look. Uh, the central airlines would like to determine how to partition their new aircraft that's serving the Boston Chicago passengers into the three classes, right? First, business and economy. This particular size of plane that they chose would have enough room for 190 economy seats if it was all economy, right? But because the uh, business and first class seats occupy a little more space, if they want to add the other classes, you can't sit really 190 people. And they say here that a first class seat takes the space of two economy seats and a business seat takes the space of one and a half economy seats. Now, we're going to uh, assume some uh, revenue numbers here for you know, AKA the ticket prices. A first class ticket yields a revenue of $1,600, a business class ticket $1,100, and an economy class ticket $500. According to historical demand, they feel like the demand for seats can be either low, medium, or high. And within each of these three scenarios, there is a certain typical quantity of people that show up asking to buy seats in each of the three classes. So, for example, uh, they believe that usually 40% of the time we are in a high demand situation, in which case there is a demand for 25 first class seats, 60 business and 210 economy. And moving on, so uh, there's a 30% chance that we will find ourselves in a medium demand situation for this particular leg, Boston, Chicago, in which case typically you see 12 uh, people wanting to buy first class seats, 30 business, 170 economy, and similar numbers for the low demand um, situation. Now, one of simplification we are assuming here is that regardless of which scenario we find ourselves in, the ticket prices are always 1600 11 and 500 If we wanted to change that, it would be very simple. I will show you later where in the model this change would be necessary. But I just wanted to point out that we could adjust the prices based on the scenario. And typically, I believe that's the case if it's a high demand um, period, the cost, the, the tickets will cost a little more, right? Great. So following that framework of ours for the two-stage stochastic optimization, there is a today and there is a tomorrow, right? And in this case, the today is the following. I am the airline. I am purchasing this plane. I have to decide how to configure it. And once I buy it, the plane is fixed, right? I'm just going to fly that plane over and over and I hope that the configuration I chose, that is how many seats in each class I have, I hope that that configuration is such that on average my plane brings in the most revenue possible. Of course the plane will sometimes fly with empty seats in either or all classes, but I can't win all the time, right? That's that's uh, an, a natural phenomenon. All I want is for this plane to be the best average plane, the best long-run operation plane that I could have. 
some days I'll be very happy with how full it is and how much I am selling in tickets. Some days I won't be as happy, but I know that this will be the ideal plane for my situation. That's the goal. So today's decision is I'm going to be calling the airplane manufacturer, for example, it could be Embraer, and say, I want this many of each class, right? So the today uh, or stage one decision variables essentially will be how many seats of each class to have. So let's uh, begin this here. Let me create three variables, right? F for first, B for business, and E for economy number of seats in each class to have on the plane. So that's what I have to decide today before I use the plane, right? Before my tomorrow. Now, what should be my tomorrow variables? It's not obvious at first. Um, one way to figure that out is to think about uh, the other parts of the problem that we're going to have to write down. And uh, a lot of times thinking about the object objective function when you're unsure of your variables helps you figure out what your variable should be. By that, I mean the following. What kind of you know, objective are we trying to use here? Well, it's a maximize revenue problem. Okay, great. What makes money? Well, what makes money is when we sell tickets. So essentially, in each scenario, for me to be able to calculate what my revenue was, I need to know how many tickets I sold in each class, right? Because each uh, ticket class sells for a different amount of money. But I can't tell you ahead of time how many tickets I'm going to sell because that number depends both on what was the demand and also how many seats I had physically on the plane. So because I need a number that I don't know, that number has to be a variable. So I have just concluded that I'm going to need for each scenario how many tickets you sold in each class. And this makes me my um, stage two variables, right? I'm going to call them SF to mean sales of first class. SB, sales of business. SE, sales of economy. And because I have three scenarios, low, medium, high demand, I'm going to have, you know, three SFs. How many first class seats did you sell in scenarios one, two, three? How many did you sell in business scenarios one, two, three? And economy one, two, three. Great. Now that I have these variables, I can write down my objective. If I know that I'm going to be in scenario one, well, each First class ticket sold in scenario one brings in 1600. Each business ticket sold in scenario one brings in 11. Each one in scenario one sold of economy class brings in 500. But this thing in parentheses here happens to me how often? 40% of the time, because that's the chance of the high demand scenario one situation, right? Likewise, for scenarios two and three, we just replace the probability was the chance I am in that scenario from 40% to 30 and change the variables. Now these are sales of scenario two of the medium demand scenario. And finally, scenario three. When I mentioned to you, if you wanted to make the ticket prices depend on scenario, you could do that here, right? If these three numbers, 16, 11, and 500 could be the ticket prices in scenario one. If you wanted to make them different in scenario two, you just change the numbers in here, and you can also make them different in scenario three. Notice that unlike example one, in this example, we don't have anything in the objective that has to do with stage one decisions, right? It's just because the story chose not to include that. But we could have, you know, another piece here, perhaps, you know, cost of the plane or, or something like that. That would involve the stage one variables. But we just chose not to. We are simply thinking, give me the best plane to maximize expected revenue. So this expression here makes our expected revenue. Great. Now let's think about what would be the constraints that affect stage one decisions and what would be the constraints that affect stage two decisions. In stage one, 
the only thing I really need to worry about is, well, uh, whatever I choose has to fit on the plane, right? Uh, one way of looking at this is you can think of it as, well, every E seat, right, economy, occupies uh, one space, right? Because uh, this 190 is 190 spaces of size economy. And every business seat occupies one and a half of the space that an economy seat occupies, right? Uh, so that's why a one and a half, how many business seats? If you want to think about this differently, you could think of this 190 as uh, square meters. And an economy seat uses one square meter. A business seat uses one and a half square meters. And a first class seat uses two square meters, right? Uh, that's why we have these coefficients in front. So this essentially is, is my stage one constraint to say, Whatever your choice was, it has to fit inside the plane. And then for my stage two constraints, let's pick a scenario just as an example. Well, the sales will be affected by, as I mentioned before, two things. First, what is available physically on the plane. That is to say, my sales of first class cannot be more than how many first class seats I have, clearly, right? And sales in business cannot be more than how many business seats? Likewise for economy. But the sales of first class is also going to be bounded by, well, how many people came asking for a first class seat? So notice if I make SF1 less than or equal to F and SF1 also less than or equal to 25, this SF1 is going to be whichever is going to be bound right by whichever is the smallest of these two values if f is greater than 25 it means there's a lot of first class seats i'll sell just what the demand was if f is less than 25 there was an excess of demand so um, the f value is going to be the limiting factor for my sales and the same rationale applies to stages uh scenarios two and three the only thing I am changing here will be you know, the indices and the variables from 1 to 2 and 3. The FBE, notice it's the constant FBE throughout the three scenarios because once I am in tomorrow's time, the FBE is now my yesterday decision, which is set in stone and I can't change. Uh, the other thing that changes from scenario to scenario is the demand, right? How many people want a first class seat. Depending on the scenario, it's going to be a little more or a little less. And these numbers here are coming from this table that we have, which is based on, let's say, historical data from this company's operation. And this pretty much um, is our model. We have the expected value in the objective, stage one variables, stage two variables, stage one constraints, and for each scenario in stage two, they each have their group of constraints. All right, great. So we can go to Excel now and make this happen. Let's go over here. So here we are. The, these variables here that I'm highlighting are gonna be my stage one decisions, how many seats I create of each kind of FBE, right? So to implement the space used constraint, I basically have to do a sum product because if you recall, the expression was two times F, right? Plus one and a half times B plus one times E. And this is the space used in terms of economy seats or square meters if you want. And that has to be less than or equal to the space available. Great. Now, if you look back on the math here, this is the only real formula that needs to be calculated. All the other constraints have a single variable on one side and a single variable or just a number on the other side, meaning the formulas are just the variables themselves. So we can implement all of these constraints directly inside Solver. The only other formula we have to you know, create in Excel besides the space used is the objective formula. So let's go down here 
And if you recall, the revenue is going to be for every scenario, the expected revenue, you know, total expected revenue will be take the probability of each scenario times the revenue of that scenario, right? Uh, so we're going to do the same thing three times. Uh, probability of scenario one here, 40% times. Well, revenue of scenario one is seats sold in scenario one, right? The sales of scenario one in each class, SF, SB, and SE, times how much they sell for. And these are the numbers that, in this particular example, are scenario independent, but they could depend on the scenario. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, what your story is asking you to do. So this is the chunk of the expected revenue that pertains to scenario one. And then we just repeat. Chance of scenario two times revenue of scenario two is sales of scenario two multiplied by the ticket prices. And probability of scenario three times how many seats are sold in each class in scenario three multiplied by the respective ticket prices, okay? And this is exactly mimicking the mathematical expression that we wrote here. Great. So we're ready to go inside Solver and set this up. Great, so the objective we just put it together, it's to sell B28. It's maximized because it's revenue our variables will be these four blocks of three variables, right? So we can select each of them and either type comma and then select the next block or on the Mac sometimes comma works when comma doesn't work. You can also press down command when you're selecting the other blocks or if you click on this little button here, a new smaller window pops up and within that window typically typing the comma in works as well. So I can select this block here, select the third block and select the fourth block. So just make sure you have the four blocks that are in gray inside this area here. Now what? Now our constraints, right? First let's take care of the space space used in C6 at most, space available in C8. And now let's go back to the math, just look at this. For the three sales of each scenario, I'm gonna say that they are both less than or equal to the value of the stage one variables, and the same three sales variables are less than or equal to that particular scenario's demand numbers, right? Great, and we're gonna repeat this for the other two scenarios. So this is how this goes. Here we are. Sales of scenario one are less than or equal to stage one variables, right? And sales of scenario one are less than or equal to demand of scenario one. And these two, steps I performed, I'm going to repeat them for scenarios two and three. So sales of scenario two are less than or equal to stage one variables, and sales of scenario two are less than or equal to scenario two demand. Finally, sales of scenario three are less than or equal to stage one variables, and sales of scenario three are less than or equal to scenario three demand. Right? So in here, you should have seven things because there are two per scenario plus the space limitation. Finally, let's make these variables non-negative and say that this problem is a linear optimization problem. So we want the linear solver. And now we're ready to run this. Let's see, almost there. Okay, so let's take a look. As I mentioned before, there is no perfect airplane, right? Sometimes it's going to do well, 
and fly full. And sometimes it's going to fly with some empty seats, but it is what it is. Let's see what the decision here was. We chose to create the following plane. Uh, we add in 12 first class seats, 30 business class seats, and 121 economy class seats. This uses up the entire space of 190. And what happens to this plane in each scenario? Well, let's see. If we're facing scenario one, I pretty much sell out the plane, right? 12, 30, 121, because the demand was all bigger than that. If we're facing scenario two, we are also selling out, right? And if we're facing scenario three, that's when we uh, are a little under because we had 12 first class, we only sold five. We had 30 business, we only sold nine, but we filled the economy area. And because there was even more economy demand than that. Now, this plane is going to generate an expected revenue per leg of $102,410. As I said, this is the largest possible average revenue for a plane flying this particular leg with these particular demand uh, patterns that we are using here. All right, um, and, and this is essentially the, the key example that I wanted to show you. Again, another illustration of first class versus uh, first uh, stage versus second stage decisions, first stage versus second stage constraints, and so forth. All right, one final comment that I usually make when I am showing this example is, um, if you recall, we looked back at uh, a few videos back at the concept of sensitivity analysis, right? And, you know, we're ordering this airplane and thinking, hmm, we may be committed to this particular model of plane that fits 190 seats, but maybe they have other models and the next one up, you know, could fit 200 or, you know, they may be, there may be some jumps there. And now the question is, if I had a bigger plane, right, instead of 190, maybe I had a 200, this probably would be a higher number. But again, that plane would cost more money. So I might be asking myself, is it worth upgrading from the next, you know, to the next model of plane based on my demand patterns? And how long would it take me to get that investment back, right? Um, if this is a question that you're considering, you could try to use sensitivity analysis to answer it. For example, if I solve this again and uh, ask for that sensitivity report, let me see. I'll click here, right? And there is going to be a shadow price for this 190 constraint right and this is going to be this is $500 so what does that mean it's telling me and then this is uh, what what is the um, allowable increase 29 okay so if I let's say let's just for the sake of the illustration here let's say the next model up that this um, airplane manufacturer offers would be a size 200 plane that means um, 10 more seats of size economy or fewer if you want to make those first class in business. And each of those adds a $500 to my revenue. So my expected revenue would now be, if I had 10 times, $5,000 more. Right. So instead of 102 for 10, it would be 107 for 10. $5,000 more per leg. And then maybe you could do like a little quick calculation or approximate calculation. Okay, $5,000 more per leg. I expect to fly, I don't know, um, three of these per day. So in a month is like another 90 of these. 90 times $5,000, $450,000. $450,000 more per month. 
but this plane costs so many million dollars more than the current one, right? So at 450,000 extra per month, it would take me so many months to recover the investment. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it, right? So these are other kinds of considerations that you could start using this particular model to help you with. And as I always like to mention, and by now you must be tired of this, but I like to emphasize it, we never run or solve these spreadsheets only once, right? We, once we put them together, they start to show us some interesting information about our problem that can trigger interesting questions. And by changing some numbers here and there and resolving, we gather more you know, insight and uh, information about the problem, about the situation we are facing, which will help us you know, make other decisions or even consider possibilities that hadn't crossed our minds before. All right, great. Uh, this is all I wanted to talk about regarding this particular problem. I hope um, you guys enjoyed this and I hope it was useful and um, also hoping to see you again here for the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.